Bitcoin will make the energy markets more efficient and uh, the energy markets will need Bitcoin in the future. Why should you mine Bitcoin while heating? In many cases, it's the cheapest possibility to heat up your home. You would only need uh, 6 million households worldwide to reach the, the whole Bitcoin hash rate. If Bitcoin does not make sense, every energy that we consume and with Bitcoin is a wasted energy. And if Bitcoin actually makes sense, then no energy that we put in Bitcoin is actually wasted. Directly after graduating from school, I entered the Bitcoin only space. When you just work uh, all day with Bitcoiners. I c can in c cannot imagine that you are not becoming a Bitcoiner yourself. And you're extremely young and already have founded a Bitcoin company. <laughs> it's, it's, yes. I, I love to see it. <laughs> yeah, I have actually worked uh, the, uh, the whole time in my life in a Bitcoin only job. So uh, directly after graduating from school, I entered the Bitcoin only space. And now I also have co-founded the, the company, 21 Energy. And yes, uh, it was a wild ride uh, the last years. <laughs> Amazing. I, I feel so many young people uh, uh, is, are seduced by cryptocurrencies, by all the shit coins. Why didn't you go to any altcoins? Why didn't you go to any other cryptocurrencies? Why did you stick from the starting to, to Bitcoin? Or did you s stick from the starting to Bitcoin? Yes. So I think it was like a, a few months. Uh, I was focusing a bit uh, beside Bitcoin uh, and other altcoins. Uh, and then I yeah realized uh, I was yeah focusing more and more uh, on Bitcoin. And then I just got the right connections and uh, saw the right videos. And then, yeah, I just uh, focused from, from that point on. I just focused on, on Bitcoin only and Bitcoin only catched me and I went down the rabbit hole. This is... I, I did not thought about uh, that before, but uh, I just, uh, it's in my head right now because um, when we have now a new generation that is kind of growing up with Bitcoin, because myself, I'm uh, 25 years old, uh, I started buying Bitcoin when I was 21 years old. Uh, mm -hmm. With 21, you're, you're kind of like starting out to actually uh have anything in life. Like before 21, like you have a little bit of school, you don't really do anything, uh, you probably party too much uh, so like i started with like 19 20 to take my life serious uh, and right on the start when i entered the serious life and entered the professional life i came across bitcoin and this changed my life but it kind of like changed it because i like i started in, in the right path um which gives me the feeling like this will this will change a whole generation how do, how do you think uh, this this could trigger down in in, in society when like people really get to Bitcoin and they don't know anything else. Like there are people um, uh, are now 14 years old and they always lived where P uh, Bitcoin always was already there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Bitcoin is a Bitcoin is a new industry, and it offers is it offers you many possibilities, and yeah, just many possibilities to to start something on your own and not to to go the the classical way, so going to university and studying for some years or something else. Um, so in the Bitcoin space, you it makes you easier just to start off and try your own thing. Uh, so it's just uh, yeah because of it's a new industry and uh, yeah not too much big companies and uh, yeah you can just start off and yeah I know uh, some other guys as well uh, who just went to school or maybe studied um, some years or some months and then just said okay uh, no I want to, to to go to the Bitcoin space and try something on my own and the most people I know it worked out well and they're doing good in the Bitcoin space and yeah so i love to see this uh, when other guys do it as well amazing and you now started a company where you can mine bitcoin while heating your space is it only heating yes. or also cooling or other things no so far only heating but uh, yeah we are probably thinking forward to to cooling as well but cooling is a bit more dif difficult and complicated uh, so first of all we are only focusing on, on heating but yeah who knows uh, i think in, in five years or in three years uh, we will probably also uh, develop uh, cooling systems because when you could uh, can can heat in winter and cool in summer uh, you have the, the killer feature <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and the obvious question is now like, why should you mine Bitcoin and while heating? Is it like uh, more en en energy efficient to do that? Or do, do you get more satoshis with that? Yeah. So the thing is, uh, the thing is, and also the yeah, the reason why we started is uh, all the people need to heat up their houses anyway. 
uh, so it doesn't matter um, and everyone needs heat and wants a fine warm home and all the then as well there are a lot of data centers in the world and a lot of hash rate and other data centers for big company like amazon google and so on and so the data centers are there anyway and the house need to to produce that they you know, need to heat up the houses anyway and that was the, re the reason why we thought okay why not combining these two things and combining the heat and the, the data centers and bring the data centers directly uh, to the homes and so that was the first thing we the first thing we thought of and yeah it's running good and it's pretty interesting uh, because you can use the the the, the energy uh, two dimensionally so on the one time you can use it in bitcoin related uh, for hashing and on the other time for heating and yeah if you put the, the if you use something like a space heater uh, which is our main product uh, you have a efficiency of 100 percent. so 100 percent of the electrical energy gets converted into heat because the energy could not get lost and you might bitcoin the, the same time and in many cases it's the cheapest uh, possibility to heat up your home so it pretty much depends on your electricity costs and on your gas and oil costs uh, but in many countries it's pretty interesting do you think that's the i saw a lot of uh, like i had a lot of debates already on the podcast where like what's the future of, of bitcoin mining yeah. a lot of bits like, like oh bitcoin mining is too centralized and like what if we when everyone has a solar panel or something like that on the house then we can mine bitcoin on that with the excess energy because maybe the the sun is uh, too much then we don't have to store it we can just trans, uh, store it not in like a, a battery we can store it in, in bitcoin when there's excess energy from the sun um do you feel like the 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 future is where like in many devices or like in almost all devices there's a small bitcoin miner in there i had a crazy guy uh, on like i think two podcasts ago he said like bitcoin mining will uh, capture almost all of the electricity uh, because we have so much uh, excess ex uh, uh, energy at some point that uh, humans don't need that much energy and everything else will use b for Bitcoin mining because that's the most profitable thing to do. Uh, do you also see the, the future in, in that direction? Yes, definitely. So I think uh, nowadays the, the Bitcoin mining is quite centralized. And yes, for us Bitcoiners, it would be great if it is more decentralized. Uh, but we also would uh, we also like to to talk with the with the normal guys with the with the people who do not uh, dedicate themselves with Bitcoin yet, and if it makes sense for them for economic reasons, um, yeah, uh, it's pretty interesting for them as well. And then these they decentralize the network as well. So we think that the, the Bitcoin mining will decentralize in the future more and more, but not just because the the Bitcoiners say okay we need to, to run a miner at home to decentralize the network, just due to economic reasons because there's so much places uh, at earth so at one at one time there, there's the individuals at homes uh, but also in the in the production for many companies which need a lot of heat um, so there's a lot of heat needed um, um, in many places and yes all this heat could be produced by by bitcoin miners and you can just uh, use bitcoin mining chips there and you are more efficient because you can use the heat at one point and at the other point you're hatching at the same time and the second thing you mentioned uh, the excess energy that's another big thing uh, so yeah we think the, the bitcoin mining will shift more and more to the places uh, where either the heat is used or either really um, yeah too much excess energy is here and yeah but miners will uh, in the next years i think um we yeah, will shift more and more to these places uh, it's interesting also like when you see big energy producers who have a lot of energy and sometimes even have to pay to offload the excess energy because they have too yeah. much and then they have to pay someone who's like why don't you just like put a bitcoin mine in there <laughs> don't pay someone yeah, else exactly. to take your excess energy and mine bitcoin and actually get money from that uh, it's 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 fascinating for me that they still don't uh get it. <laughs> still don't get it yeah and no definitely so you you would only need uh, six million households worldwide uh, to to reach the, the whole Bitcoin hash rate. So, uh, if six million households uh, would have a, a miner with about let's order a few miners with about hundred tera hash and about yeah then let's say uh, two to three kilowatts, uh, you would uh, we would have the, the complete Bitcoin hash rate uh, worldwide. So it's not too much, and uh, we could ne definitely do it. And another interesting thing is. Um, that the, the worldwide primary energy usage, uh, so half, or the half of the worldwide primary energy usage is used for heat. 
and that's about I think 167,000 ter uh, terawatt hours a year. And the Bitcoin mining only uses about 125 terawatt hours per year. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, upside potential in the next years. And I think there. Bitcoin can could use much more energy, and it's nothing bad because it just produces the heat, uh, which is uh, needed anyway. Mm. So you use the heat that the miner gives off naturally uh, to heat the space, basically, and that's more energy efficient because if you have like a heater and a separate Bitcoin miner, uh, then the heater needs the full electric uh, full electricity, and when you combine that, you're you're more efficient. Did I understand it right? Yes, exactly. So there, are, without up, there are for sure uh, many places uh, on Earth where it makes sense to 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 mine, uh, to mine anyway, and to just to for using excess energy or for flag gas mining or things like that, uh, as we see in the US now. Uh, but I think uh, the mining will more and more shift to the places where the, the heat is used. Really cool. And just uh, quick that uh, people can understand how how does this work on on like a practical level. Do they just plug in the the heater and then they set up some some Bitcoin wallet and then they automatically get it like once a week or like every day or like how does this work? Yes, so more or less. Um, so the, the 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 big thing was for us uh, to 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 get the, the Bitcoin miners uh, pretty pretty quiet because normally a Bitcoin miner is quite loud. So I think most of the people in the Bitcoin space have at least seen a video of a Bitcoin miner or a big mining farm. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty noisy and you can't just put it in your living room. So uh, the big hurdle for us was to, to, uh, to, to make them quiet with special cooling ribs, with uh, special fans and things like that. And on the second part, to, to make it as easy and as convenient as possible for the client uh, to set it up. Uh, to set it up and yeah we have now developed a known app for the ios and play store and more or less it's just you plug in the socket uh, you download the app uh, you connect uh, your mobile phone to the to the heater so there's a microcontroller inside and then you connect the microcontroller to your wi-fi at home and so the the miner inside more or less gets internet and it starts hashing and then in the last step you just uh, need to set up a mining pool account so in the Bitcoin mining, it's so it's like playing lottery, and it's pretty pretty difficult to to find a valid block if you do just solo mining. So you compete against all the the people worldwide. So your chances would be like one to six million every ten minutes, and so it's easier to to get yourself a mining pool account and just choose a mining pool and then try to to find a valid block with many other people. And each time the, the mining pool uh, finds a finds a valid block, uh, you get your rewards. And it pretty much depends on the on the size or of the percentage of the of the mining pool. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's like daily or at least weekly. And yeah, but in the end, it doesn't matter if you get your rewards daily or your rewards weekly. Uh, it's the same. Then weekly, just the amount is higher. Cool. And uh, when you like I had a different question, but uh, when you look at the Bitcoin mining pools, um, do you think that it's a danger to have those mining pools because they are getting the system more centralized or is that uh, no danger? Yeah, yes, it's for sure a danger, um, but it's also difficult. So uh, uh, for sure, the, the, the big miners, uh, the big uh, US listed companies will always uh, choose the, the cheapest mining pools and not the uh, yeah maybe some better or older mining pools and yeah i think that's the, the reason why uh, many people are going to the to the big mining pools uh, but we are mainly using brains and recommending brains for example so brains is the the oldest mining pool uh, and i think that the mining pool which has uh, mined the most bitcoins ever and i think uh, the other mining pools won't be able to to achieve that uh, because they're yeah just but just too much coins uh, coins uh, rewarded in the in the last years and yeah, so Brains, these are very pretty nice guys. They are from Czech, from Prague, um, and we are a lot of in, uh, we are uh, all the time in touch with them and talk with them. And yeah, so we support the Brains pool. And yeah, probably we and our clients can shift the, the hash rate a bit more to the smaller and better mining pools. Ah, cool, cool, cool. Um, and uh, the the thing that probably a lot of people will ask in the question uh, in the comment section, if I, if I don't ask it, how many satoshis can I can I get a day on average when I when I put in the in, in mining a, a heater? 
Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, I don't even know the, the exact amount of Satoshis. So we are more calculating in the fiat terms. Uh, so more calculating in the rewards per kilowatt hour. Uh, but it's just like the, the same uh, with, with the, the normal classic uh, mining machines. Uh, so we are mostly using S19K pros in our in our heating systems. And uh, there's 19K pros uh, currently. They are something, yeah, I think 13 cents per kilowatt hour. And before the halving, it was like 22 cents per kilowatt hour. And now it moved down a bit. But I think, yeah, if the Bitcoin price will go up and we will have a bull run, uh, it will be much more again. But yeah, we are more calculating. And also on our website, we are more calculating uh, with, the, with the fear terms because it's just more reachable for most of our clients. And yeah, nowadays, uh, many of our clients, clients are still Bitcoiners as well. And yeah, Bitcoiners are a great target group. But we want to reach the, the, the people beside Bitcoiners as well and yeah just show them okay bitcoin can can help you as well a bit and bitcoin is nothing bad bitcoin doesn't boil the oceans uh, bitcoin just can just help uh, to heat up your home more efficient the, this this argument still comes up i feel like oh bitcoin is, yeah. is boiling the oceans like yeah. it, it's mm -hmm. fascinating for me how, how long this 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 thing comes around and there was uh who, who are the organizations who make um this anti-bitcoin with the Bitcoin pros, they made an advertisement again. I forgot the name. Yeah, it was just the, the Japanese. Was it Japanese? No, I don't know. Really uh, popular. Yeah, the, the guy behind is Alex de Vries from the, from the, from the central bank in, in the Netherlands. And I think he did the calculations. And then there was the, how to say, the, the print, uh, the, the printing paper. Oh, green. Which did, uh... oh Greenpeace, I mean, the, the Greenpeace thing. Ah, okay. Uh, where, where they, they, yeah, they released the new ad again with like, hey, Bitcoin pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Greenpeace does a lot uh, against uh, against Bitcoin, uh, but they, are, I think, uh, mostly financed by Ripple, and Ripple uh, just say, okay, we don't like Bitcoin, we want to to become the number one, and yeah, that was the reason why Greenpeace is so much uh, against Bitcoin. But I think these these narratives are shifting more and more as well, uh, because I think now the, the all the other cryptocurrencies and all can see, oh, okay, uh, Bitcoin is well regulated in the in the US as commodity, and it would be interesting for us as well so it is uh, probably better to to yeah to try to be with, together with bitcoin and uh, yeah to to work with bitcoin together and not to be against them uh, because bitcoin is yeah has done a big step and we need to done it in a we need to to do it in the future and so it could be easier for us and bitcoin even like promotes and this is why i don't get why right cream parties are not for it because it promotes uh, renewable energy right yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I think, yeah, for us, uh, we cannot understand why there are still so much companies and so much big organizations organizations against Bitcoin. Uh, but we at Twenty One Energy just say, okay, we want to, to show these real uh, use cases, uh, real practical use cases. Uh, for example, with heating. So, when you need to heat up your house anyway, it doesn't matter if you heat up your house with. And yeah, just a normal electric electrical radiator, or if you use a Bitcoin main, uh, miner, the electricity consumption is just the same. Mm, and I think this is, those are the arguments and the examples uh, that we have to give. Like we have to really make it uh, uh, touchable. We really have to put it on the ground and like, oh, that's that's how Bitcoin is actually uh, good for it. And and the argument like that do, do you have an uh, because you're working in, in bitcoin and energy so like probably you you get that uh, ask a lot do you have like already like a small elevator pitch for the for the for the question like oh but uh, i heard bitcoin is bad for the environment uh, isn't that so like do you already have a, <laughs> a short elevator pitch that you usually give to to people that don't have bitcoin yeah, so the best thing uh, when we have our heating devices with us, it is just to, to show up uh, to show up the heating devices and show them, ah, yes, that's a Bitcoin miner, and the Bitcoin miner is nothing bad. It mines Bitcoin, uh, but it just heat up, heats up your home, and you need to heat up your home anyway. And then many people understand it, because if you just tell them uh, something, ah, okay, these facts and facts, and yeah, Bitcoin uh, is CO2 negative uh, because it uses the flare gas, for example, uh, it is sometimes it's too far away in their heads and so we made the experience that it's easier for many people just especially for older people uh, just to show them a heating device and say okay this is a bitcoin miner and it mines bitcoin it's nothing bad it just heat ups your heats up your home and you would 
do uh, you would do it anyway yeah and then i think this is it's a great way to do it uh and and just show them like oh it's 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 a good thing bitcoin money is nothing bad you don't have to be scared of yeah. it uh and i feel like uh most of the people just don't understand why bitcoin is important and uh, i i usually always uh try to shift the conversation from away from like oh bitcoin consumes so much energy do like oh, why do we do bitcoin in the first place like like wh why does it make bitcoin sense because if bitcoin does not make sense every uh energy that we consume uh with bitcoin is a wasted energy uh, and if bitcoin actually makes sense then no energy that we put in bitcoin is actually wasted so i i usually try to like really steer it by like oh but let, let's figure out like if bitcoin makes sense or not uh, and and put it in that direction i feel like when people actually understand the value of bitcoin uh, and and what it does and then we when we compare it to the banking system when we compare it to other things then it more, makes more sense but first bitcoin first people have to to get what bitcoin actually is and and not like oh yeah the, those numbers and that and that's the future and this and that like they are probably uh, overwhelmed by, by that i think at least yeah definitely so we made the same experience uh, just with the with the other thing i mentioned before uh, that yeah bitcoin the, the people need to need to to say uh, or need to understand okay bitcoin does make sense uh, but on the other hand we we just showed them okay uh, you you would you would need up your home anyway and you could do it with bitcoin miners as well uh, bitcoin could Bitcoin couldn't be bad because if you use an electric radiator or a Bitcoin miner, there's no difference. And yeah, so for us, it was, yeah, it is mostly going this way. But your argument is uh, definitely to 400% true. Uh, the people need to understand at least a bit, okay, Bitcoin is valuable and we need Bitcoin. And yeah, then it's the, the heating system or the yeah, heating with Bitcoin is even more uh yeah even more better even better for them thank you you already made it halfway through the video and i'm really really grateful to have you here two things make this channel possible you as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel and another one is all the bitcoin brands that i partner up with like 21 bitcoin who support me from the very start and where i personally buy my bitcoin from with code robin you even get a discount when you buy bitcoin with them and now also bitbox bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistic. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order plus you support my channel. And now let's get back to the video uh, I, I can understand the, the general populace because uh they they only hear like oh bitcoin is just used for criminals uh and it's like, highly volatile and then oh it also uses more energy than austria like <laughs> it's, it's like oh, and you hear all those things and, and this is the only thing that you hear from bitcoin then you're like oh shit yeah that's actually bad for the environment right when we can just turn it off then it would be better uh, and and that's like uh, I, th I think we just have to like push out and, and get the education out and that's why i also do the podcast now every day uh because i hope just like uh, with every video i at least get one guy or one girl in there that sees the videos like oh okay bitcoin is actually that and and 99 of the audience probably already has bitcoin or is interested in bitcoin that watches my stuff but i hope that there's like this one percent uh people in it are like oh let, let me see that that bitcoin thing today um another topic uh, and i am kind of kind of related to that but uh do you think uh the, that bitcoin will 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 change the the energy market in a sense where uh energy will be we, we covered it a little bit before where energy is is abundant because all of a sudden we can produce big energy facilities in in the middle of the desert and it makes sense because we don't have to transport the energy from there. We don't have to store it. And usually when we have to store it and transport the energy, then it's like uh, a lot gets lost. And that's why a lot of projects don't get built. But when you can build those uh, plants and build those facilities and just turn on the Bitcoin miner uh, till someone buys that energy, like it, it makes sense from day one. Uh, and then I think Terahash is, is is doing some some stuff with that. Uh, at least I heard uh, them talking about that. Uh, how do you think, like uh, on a broader scale, Bitcoin could like influence the energy market and influence energy producers? 
Yeah, definitely. So uh, I think uh, Bitcoin will make the, the energy markets more efficient and uh, the energy markets will need Bitcoin in the future because if we will shift more and more to renewable energies, uh, it will be yeah more, more difficult in the future, in the next years. Uh, to stabilize the grid and so Bitcoin mining I think can 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 do a huge part and we already see this in the in America uh, where many or yeah some miners are doing demand response programs uh, for example with the grid in Texas but we do not have too much I do not have too much insights in the US we are more focusing on Europe and yeah, we are focusing on, on these things in Europe and we are trying to, to bring Bitcoin mining more and more, more and more to Europe and we are working cl quite close together with TerraHash uh, on some yeah, bigger projects for balancing power and yeah these are pretty interesting projects and yeah the, the big companies or the electricity providers and energy companies uh, being more and more open to talk about Bitcoin and um, probably they see, ah, okay, yes, B Bitcoin, maybe it could help us a bit in, in some ways. And why not, uh, yeah, why should we not just talk about uh, or at least uh, discuss a bit uh, about the topic and see in some calculations, maybe it makes sense, maybe not, or to start some little projects. Uh, but I think in the, in the next five years or the next 10 years, uh, I think Bitcoin will influence the energy market, especially in Europe. Uh, quite a lot because so Germany, uh, yeah, shut down the, the nuclear energy. And if you want to to use only solar and wind, they uh, will need to to build, uh, yeah, big uh, big solar panels and big solar farms, and especially for the wind as well. So in Austria, it's a bit better because in Austria we have a bit a bit of hydropower. So especially in 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 the west of Austria in Tyrol, because we live in the Alps in the in the mountains, so it's easier. Uh, but when you just have hydro uh, wind and solar it's more difficult to mm. stabilize the grid and yeah then bitcoin could be yeah a big thing uh to to use it i, I love that example from from taxes and and i researched it deeply uh and uh, and i think i covered it on one podcast really in in depth with mm. like two three guests uh and i love that example just like when when the miners actually work uh, together uh with the energy uh, grid and with the government to like stabilize the grid when there's a lot of energy, like let's just turn back the energy miners, then they get credits for that, for turning it off. Then they can, when there's not as much use, they can stabilize it again. Like there's a lot of uh, great things happening. And what you also said with the European Bitcoin community, I think uh, it's it's really uh, uh, great to point out because I think we have a really cool Bitcoin community in Europe, but the uh, at disadvantage that Europeans have uh, against American Bitcoiners, the Americans have like, pretty much one language. They all speak like English uh, and Europeans, like there's German, there's Spanish, there, there's Dutch, there's so many different languages and most uh, going ahead and making the content in their local language uh, and not in English. So most of the really good uh, and uh, Bitcoin content creators and the voices in Bitcoin, they never heard because it's not English. And that's also like what I try to do, like push everyone on, on podcasts and like give them a voice in, in Europe in English. So the world stage can, can hear the, those great voices. Yeah, that's a great thing. So I think that the, especially the German speaking community, so I don't know too much about the French or the Spanish speaking, uh, but the, the German speaking community is a pretty good one. And I think in Germany, there are, yeah, uh, it's the, quite the, the same amount of full notes uh, like in America and America has uh, three times the amount or four times the amount of people uh, of Germany. So I think the German community is quite a good one and they're yeah, a pretty big uh, community movement with meetups and things like that, conferences. And yeah, I think the, the Germans are doing a good job. And yeah, Vienna is also, you're from Vienna, uh, important uh, center for the Austrian economics. And so Bitcoin and, and Austria, yeah, Bitcoin and the German speaking countries are well fitting together. Yeah, it's a, so some of my comments already said, like, I have to make a Vienna video uh, where I explain <laughs> about Austrian economics or some old yeah. buildings and beautiful buildings from, from Vienna. I, I'm usually not that kind of a content creator to go through <laughs> the city and make that kind of content, but I, I might you actually make do a blog it, uh, of, your, of your podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I rather prefer the, the podcast till now. But as you said, like uh, you, you said it right now, I don't know about the French or Spanish community. Uh, and that's the that's the thing, uh, because the Americans know about all the other American communities uh, that are uh, uh, spread out. But the Germans only know about the international English speaking ones and the German one because they don't understand Spanish or French and this and that. Yeah. So, so we, 
we Europeans are often think, ah, there are not that many European Bitcoiners, but there are a lot. We just don't understand yeah. them. Yeah. And I think we, we saw it in Prague one and a half weeks ago uh, as well. So there was the, the biggest European and the best European uh, Bitcoin conference uh, in Prague. Um, a pretty good one. I think it, there were about uh, 6,000 participants, something like that. And yeah, 6,000 people, that's quite a lot. Uh, so all the Europeans come together and it's a yeah a cool meeting point for all European countries. So the Spanish guys, the German guys, the French guys and so on. And yeah, we, I think... Uh, it's the proof that uh, there it, uh, is quite a lot of quite a lot happening uh, for Bitcoin in Europe as well. And yes, sure, America is is a great uh, country, and America is doing a lot for Bitcoin. And Americans, I think, are many many things are ahead than the Europeans, but especially to, due to the regulations. But the community is strong in, in Europe, and yeah, I think that it has a huge potential. I was really envy because I, like I was really deep in politics uh, three years ago. Now I'm not at all, uh, but I was interested in the debates uh, when in Austria in the European election and also in the American election was coming up, not because of what they are saying, but I was uh, interested in what they are talking about, like what topics uh, are they bringing up. In Austria, with the EU election, also on the EU level, the uh, the election debates, uh, I never heard anything about Bitcoin, cryptos, anything like that. Uh, I think that there's one guy who said like, "Oh, uh, we we want hard we want hard currency again," and they talked about shilling, like the Austrian uh, currency before uh, uh, euro. And they're like, "Eh, I don't know if if that's <laughs> an advantage." Uh, and in an American election. Uh, uh, Trump is talking about it. He gets donations uh, in Bitcoin. He gets donations f from Bitcoiners. Even Biden had to talk about it a little bit. Uh, and it's a topic. Uh, it's it, at least they're talking about it at some extent. It's not at the main topic, of course, but it's it's some topic. And in, in the U like, European election, like they don't even talk about it. They, they don't even dis discuss it. We're like, ah, I see that Americans are, are a little bit more open, a little bit more willing to to, to speak about that, which. Ah, I saw a little bit envy in, in America election debates. <laughs> yeah, uh, so definitely. But but I think in, in some years, the, the Europeans uh, will need uh, to follow uh, the Americans when they see, okay, uh, Bitcoin is not such a bad thing as we were thinking in the beginning. Um, and yeah, so nowadays, so Bitcoin in Europe is, yeah, not positive, let's say. It's not, it's not too negative because the regulation, okay, it's okay. Uh, you can use Bitcoin, you can buy Bitcoin, you can mine Bitcoin and things like that. Uh, but it's not like that, that the politicians are talking about Bitcoin and how great is Bitcoin. And yeah, in America, in America uh, there is yeah, happening quite a lot. But that is the reason why we are working in, in Europe, in Austria, and why we are yeah, orange billing and yeah, trying to educate the, the Europeans and the European community and try to yeah, onboard more people to Bitcoin in Europe. Absolutely. That's why I also try to give everyone in, in Europe also a stage, even though I see there are a lot of Americans on my podcast. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So what is the, um, what is mm -hmm. the, the, how many are Americans and how many Europeans do you have as guests in your podcast? Oh, that would be interesting. I, I should uh, make a statistic. I only like know about 50, the audience. 50? Uh, I know about the yeah. audience. There's like 50% Americans and 50% rest of the world. Uh, there's United Kingdom in there, also strong. Canada's in there, strong. Uh, and Australia. So, like, mm -hmm. Germany, for example, only has like 4%. Um, but I think I have already, uh, already a lot of German Austrian guys. El Salvador is very strong, also, in my guests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, really want so I think in Germany, there are a lot of uh, big podcasts and big YouTubers who just speak, speak German. And yeah, I think most of the people just listen in the, in the local language. And yeah, if there is a lot of Bitcoin content in the local language, for especially in Germany, uh, yeah, then the people just listen to the German podcast more. And as we are speaking English, yeah, probably more the, the US guys or the guys from the United Kingdom will listen to the podcast. So yeah, I totally understand it. Yeah, and, and that's that's one thing actually in there, uh, because when I started it, I uh, was thinking of like, oh, do I want to do it in English or German? Because like I have an English speaking uh, girlfriend, I have uh, friends who speak English. Uh, I sp spoke the the work that I did uh, even while starting the podcast. I also spoke like fifty percent English there, so English was never like a problem for me. I like even before starting the podcast, 
80, 70 percent of my life was already English. Uh, so I kind of could took this decision uh, like just like ah, let's do this or that. And then I looked at the German market and I, uh, I was like, ah, interesting. There is Nico doing a great podcast. There are other uh, at least five, six podcasts. They are a little smaller, but they're also doing a great job. Uh, and then I looked at also other content creators. There's Roman Reher, the block trainer. Uh, there's Sunny Degree. There are really a lot of great podcasters and content creators in the German market where I was like, I don't have to be another podcast. I also don't have to be another podcast in English speaking, <laughs> in the English, English speaking uh, area. I just can freely choose where I want to be because I don't have to fill any hole in any market. Uh, so I think this also speaks to the strength of the German speaking market. Because if I would have seen like there's no great uh, German speaking podcast, of course I would have made one uh, because it's also my native language. And there's also like this one thing I, I feel more comfortable in speaking English than the high standard of, of German. <laughs> uh, like, because I, there's like a different Austrian German and a, and, and, and a, and a German German, I would say. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, that's also one thing. How was uh, actually Prague for you? Uh, you? You were there, right? Yes, Prague was a great conference. So I've been in Prague uh, for the second time uh, last year as well for the BTC Prague. And yeah, we had the booth there with 21 Energy and had a lot of good connections, good networking with other people, a lot of interesting clients. And yeah, we also had a spinning wheel. So all the people were spinning at our booth uh, to win an Artminer S9. And so it was kind of quite a good uh, point to catch all the people. Uh, no, Prague, the conference was pretty good. So the main stage was amazing. Even I did not saw one single talk at the main stage. It was more at the booth and <laughs> more networking, but I already uh, watched some videos on YouTube. And yeah, the, the people were great. Uh, I also know the, know the organizers a bit. They are making a good job and yeah, trying to, to bring on uh, Bitcoin in Europe. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, well done and see you next year in Prague. Definitely. I, I'm so sorry that I missed you. Like I was, I was yeah. uh, <laughs> only there. I was three days there, but I had five yeah. podcasts while I was there. So I was not yeah. that much actually at the conference, yeah. uh, but I always try to, to move around and, and see everyone. Uh, but uh, there's so many people uh, and uh, unfortunately I, I missed everyone. some people. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, you can't meet everyone. So there will always be some people of the conference who think, ah, I should have met with him. Uh, but that's okay. So there are some other conferences as well. And otherwise, the, the, there's just a conference next year again. And I think we will all meet uh, at one point uh, the conference. And yeah, I think it's also a proof that um, there are quite a lot of conferences in Europe, Bitcoin only conferences, and great Bitcoin only conferences. And yeah, so the, the Europeans are also making a good job in the conference scene absolutely uh you also organ uh organized uh with uh, some others uh, a bitcoin conference i think it was the biggest one in in the german speaking area right yes exactly yeah that was the thing i so i tell uh, i as I told before, uh, I was graduating, graduating from school uh, four years ago, so 2020. And then I had to do the civil service in Austria. So in Austria, you have to go either to the military or to the civil, civil service for one year. And I was thinking a bit, okay, uh, what uh, what possibilities uh, are there now? What can I do now? And I was thinking, okay, I will go uh, to university. Uh, but then there, yeah, I heard by coincidence a bit that uh, the best friend of my dad uh, is planning, planning a bit Bitcoin conference. So uh, even the, bit, uh, the biggest uh, Bitcoin conference uh, in the German speaking area. And I, I was just asking him, okay, uh, baby Peter, can I help you a bit? And in the beginning, he was more like, ah, okay, it's, it's such a cool thing. Uh, I want to do it on my own. And, but then he said, okay, yeah, I can help him a bit. Uh, but then from time to time, so he has another, he has an, in his normal fiat life, he has a, a event agency for bigger German companies. And he had to do, he had a lot of work here with the, with the fiat agency. And yeah, I became more or less the project manager of the, of the conference and got to know many people and great uh, networking contacts. And it was, yeah, I think it's the best experience I could have. Uh, I could have with. Yeah, I started with 20 years, and uh, when I when the conference was happening, I was 21 years. So yeah, it was a pretty good year with 21 years uh, organizing the, the biggest German speaking conference. And yeah, for my, for me, it was the, the best experience to to connect with so many speakers and 
so many different people from different areas. So some of them were like university professors, other were big podcasters, big YouTubers, and it was pretty cool. And so that's why you decided not to go to university and, and, and go directly in Bitcoin, which is really cool that like can Bitcoin saved you from university. Yeah, yeah, I would not save, uh, I would not say safe because yeah, university isn't something bad. Uh, but yeah, after the first year of the conference, I was thinking, okay, um, probably I can, I, I, I should go to study at university now. I was not, I was not quite sure. And yeah, then I was even studying for three weeks at university. Um, I did computer science. Uh, but then at the same time, I co-founded the company 21 Energy. We talked uh, before. And then we, yeah, there were the, the meetings at the same time. So I had some, uh, some, how to say, some lectures at university uh, where there was, uh, uh, where, where I was obligated to, to be, to be there. And at the same time, we had, yeah, some meetings with the lawyer in Austria for the company. And then I, yeah, needed to decide uh, whether I want to, to focus on Bitcoin or on, on the university. And then it was clear for us. So it was an easy decision. Um, yeah that I want to, to focus myself on, on Bitcoin and on 21 Energy and the conference. And, and with uh, 21, when you started working at the conference, you already went, were in Bitcoin, uh, how long? Yes, uh, so I was in Bitcoin for about one and a half years. Uh, but not too deep into Bitcoin. So I, yeah, I watched some videos and I, uh, yeah, read some books and read some articles and things like that. But it was not, uh, yeah, that I was just thinking of Bitcoin every day. And yeah, so the, the conference and especially all the contacts I, I get to know, uh, yeah, helped me, helped me a lot to understand more and more. And also to be, yeah, just to say, okay, Bitcoin is the, the cool thing and to get more and more motivation. And because when you just work uh, all day with Bitcoiners, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can, can, cannot imagine that you are not becoming a Bitcoiner yourself uh, when you're organizing a conference. And, yeah. So I was more a Bitcoiner, yes, uh, but I was not the, the Bitcoin only maxi. Exposure to a lot of Bitcoiners definitely forms you uh, it's like i have uh, already like half a year now where i do every day a podcast with with bitcoiners and i'm since i don't know three years now around that time uh full in bitcoin like all in like uh, i sold all my stocks everything that i had before yeah. uh, and i'm full in but still the exposure to all those great bitcoiners who do all those great things in bitcoin that that forms you a, a lot so i can definitely understand that and before we uh, come to the end routine, I have a question that uh, is kind of like my, my new end routine. Um, what are you currently passionate about uh, besides Bitcoin, besides uh, working in Bitcoin and learning about Bitcoin? Yes, I'm quite passionate about uh, sports and I'm also kind of a professional athlete and alpinist. And yeah, so before I started my Bitcoin career, I was also already doing a lot of sport and yeah, so... Uh, most uh, mainly mountain sports and alpinist, uh, yeah, alpinistic stuff. And yeah, next week or this week in four days, three days, I'm going to Pakistan for an expedition on a 7,000 meter peak. So this is my yeah, second uh, big passion beside uh, Bitcoin. And when I'm, when I'm not working, uh, I'm mostly training at home and getting ready for bigger mountain projects. Wait, this is uh, uh, like seven kilometers going up in the air or like it's a hike or? Yes. Yes, yes. So the so the, the Everest is eight thousand eight hundred forty eight, and we are trying a seven thousand meter peak. And yeah, amazing! <laughs> I love it. Is it like how how long do you need uh, up there? Uh, it pretty much depends on the mountain, but we are planning to to go up three two or three days. But it pretty much uh, much depends on the mountain and on the difficulty of the of the climbing grade. So when it's quite easy. So for example, Everest, it's not difficult uh, to climb Everest for an alpinist. Uh, Everest is uh, regarding the the climbing difficulties a quite easy mountains. It's only high, but if you use the, the surplus oxygen, uh, yeah. Uh, I would say a 50 year old uh, average man who trains for one or two years uh, could normally go, uh, could normally do Everest as well. And so, but there are a lot of some smaller peaks. So, there are a lot of 7,000 meter peaks in Pakistan and Nepal, um, which are unclimbed um, still, or which maybe have climbed one time 40 years ago. And that's more the, the motivation and the interesting mountains for the alpinists. And it also depends. So if it's a pretty difficult mountain, it could take you four or five days as well to climb a thousand meter face. 
and yeah. What, what do you have to to take in account when you go up there with the air? Like you have to have some some air with you, or like do you have to just go slower, or like how does this work? Uh, yeah, no, for the for so for for me, um, I'm more like what I have more like the opinion. Okay, uh, so using the the surplus oxygen uh, is like a bit like cheating, and uh, yeah, so so I won't use the surplus oxygen, and you just have to acclimatize enough and to spend a lot of time in the altitude before you go to the summit and yeah to have a good fitness a lot of training in the in the months and in the years before and yeah and just, just slowly and but it also works without oxygen amazing love it perfect then uh that was a, so a great, great uh, uh <laughs> adventure and some other topics um before we come to the uh now we come to the end routine uh where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest uh, without knowing who the next guest actually is um and uh, this is a very broad question <laughs> uh so you can go in many different directions uh, wherever you want to go with that um what future do you envision for Bitcoin? So what future? Uh, so the, the previous uh, the previous podcast guest asked me asked this question and you asked it to me. Okay, uh, the the future for Bitcoin. What was exactly. The yeah, the the, the previous guest asked the, the question for yeah. you, and the question is, what okay. future do you envision for Bitcoin? That's why I said it's like a really broad question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can go in, in in any direction you want to go, and uh, yeah, I just mm -hmm. I just throw it at you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I hope uh, Bitcoin will help the will help the people for the next uh, few hundred years and for the next few thousand years, and Bitcoin will stay uh, for a long time. And Bitcoin will do something positive for the people, for the environment, especially. Yeah, we are focusing on the environment, uh, but I believe Bitcoin can do it, and I hope Bitcoin will do it. Amazing! Uh, thank you, Lucas, for, for for being on. Before I let you go, uh, where can people find you, and where can people uh, ask you questions? Yes, so I'm mostly on Instagram, uh, on Twitter, and on, on LinkedIn. So on Instagram, my uh, on Twitter, my handle is Lukas Waldner zero uh, seven. On LinkedIn, my name is Lukas Waldner. And for those people who are interested in my yeah professional sports career and alpinistic stuff, I'm a bit more Instagram for the for the sports career. And my handle there is Lukas Waldner zero seven as well. And for all people who want to get in touch with us regarding 21 Energy or have questions about it, uh, just visit our website, 21energy.com, uh, with a contact formula and yeah, just reach out. Perfect. And thank you, Lucas, for, for being on. And uh, everyone else, uh, thank you for watching and listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.